that's weird. My Twitter account is open, and it, there's this tweet about ticker LAC from from Monday. Is it Monday? Yeah, the 23rd of August. Weird. Huh, I wonder what LAC's been doing. Huh? Wow. Quite a little pop on LAC. You guys been knowing LAC? Let me know in the chat if you've been knowing LAC. Also, we've got none other than the dog with the toupee here. None of you been knowing LAC. None of you been knowing. John, I don't believe you. How about the tickers from yesterday? <clears throat> Energy equipment and services. Any you did any of you guys take any of those trades? Because HAL popped off, baby. Yeah. Man, so let's see. We had some really smart, good looking viewers yesterday. Um, and to them, we announced a handful of stocks. HAL looked pretty darn good. Man, what a move. Wow. I appreciate you, Born to be Free. <laughs> You're probably one of the one likes I got on that, on that tweet. <sighs> All right, what are we looking at here? What are we looking at? Let's look at the indices. Ooh. You love to see it. Do you guys think we'll get an AMC pop? That's right, baby. Um, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Looking really, really good on Spy with the old Bollinger band here. Old. Old. Yo. Um, spy looking really healthy. Super duper healthy. Let's check. Um, do I do XL? We'll do QQQ. Maybe. What do you guys think? Lost momentum. My RSI is still on 10. Keep that in mind. Do you see me? <laughs> I like your avatar. We are looking for rat snacks. Um, the rat snacks are in energy services and uh, uh, energy equipment and services. The rebound coming in from all bounce on all um still like in go, let's go with palantir palantir um in this little consolidation phase still liking it still liking it um unity loving it loving it sitting right on that nine day moving average that's fine with me that's fine with me um that's right tiny pie congratulations to all of our only fans Con content producers um, for getting their art reinstated. Tiny Pie, that's the code. Um, okay, so yeah, let's look at ETH. We're going to look at Ethereum, so so shut up and deal with it. Uh, 
Um, look at that 20 day. There you go. There you go. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. We got the Bollinger Band here on Ethereum. We got the 20 day moving average clearly doing its thing in the middle of our, our little Bollinger Band situation. Do you think this this touch here on the on the 20 day moving average is a buy? Give me a one. Give me a two if you think it's uh, not not too clear. And then I'm going to follow up after that. After that, I'm going to remove the Bollinger Band and dig deeper. Um, and I'm not seeing... Someone said that there was a a, a, oh, a bearish engulfing on ETH. Um, the, the, the engulfing candle needs to be on the right side. It needs to be on the right side. So that's not... This is not a... So James, this is not a, a bearish engulfing because here the red candle is on the left. The right candle is the one that allows you to uh, make an educated forecast. So that's not the case here. It would have to be a, the exact opposite of this to be a bearish engulfing. And in all likelihood, this would go uh, a bit lower. What is a Bollinger Band, um, Abdu? It's Bollinger Band is what I'm saying. I'm saying Bollinger Band. Um, okay, so Tiny Pie saying that's a buy. James is saying no, that's not a buy. Um, congrats to AB for uh, holding on to his OnlyFans uh, subscription income. That is really good. Um, Heavenly saying it's a buy. Peter saying no. Born to be free saying no. Pam, yes. Peter, no. Um, and then James, perhaps astutely saying yesterday would have been the day. All right. Good answers. So let's remove the Bollinger Band and look just at the price structure. So why do we have so many no's? Let's dig into that. Because I tend to agree. Baron, a fellow you bull. I see you there in chat. Uh, we can do tape. We can, we can do Dogecoin. We can do, do Dogecoin, but you need to ask at least 11 more times. And then we can do it. I'm just kidding. We'll do it. Tiny pie. It looks that way. It looks that way. Um, it would be different if there was a more of a, a, a consistent pattern of consolidation going on, but this is one of these. Right up in the air. So we're looking at this like a double top and it's not, I don't think this is crazy. This looks like the end of, of a, just a big run up here, ladies and gents. Like this, you want to talk about it, engulfing candles. Good gravy. If you didn't get in after this, what y'all doing? You guys know we had the double bottom here, the double V. We got this really clear bullish engulfing candle for that spike up on the right butt cheek. And boy, was that run good. Lined up perfectly with previous resistance, broke through with a big candle, and then kept on running. And then the run ended. All right, time to distribute a little bit. Time for big holders of Ethereum to distribute their assets, to sell them off and take profit. Market cycles. All right, so we've got this upper line of resistance. We'll go ahead and draw our neckline right here. I think that's pretty clear. All right, so now how low can we go? How low do I do I use supply and demand? Yeah, supply and demand is everything. This is all supply and demand. What's up? Shit, I logged out. Sometimes I do that. Put it. Put I, a coin in the naughty swear jar. Uh, I don't have it. I have a. Um, 
I have this piece of my microphone boom that broke off. I'll put it in here. Remind me. All right. Sorry for swearing, guys. Don't tell Joel. Um, and we're back. Um, I have a back button on my mouse, and sometimes I touch it. I get nervous. Classic. Yeah. Yeah, Abdu, the man did. That's that's a little magic trick you just saw. <laughs> um, okay, so we were talking about the the end of this really nice run. How much was this run? Like, we'll take it all the way to the top. Ninety percent. Darn. Um, all right. Whoops. All over the place today. Um, so how low can this go? If we treat it like a normal double top, we're going to measure this distance and then subtract it from this lower line. All right. So that's what I'm going to use this middle line for. And that's going to get us no surprise right here. So that thank you, Crypto Morning Show. Appreciate you. Thank you for the five for the for the swear jar. Five quid? Five, yeah, five quid. Five doll hairs. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's that's how low it can go. This is gonna be your level um to say accumulation has ended, or I'm sorry, distribution has ended for Ethereum, and then we need to establish another base. Um, that's just how it goes. Um, it can say no to that, and it can break out of this pattern, right? But if it loses this line of support, we're targeting the level that I just outlined, and I'll go ahead and stamp that for you. I'll put a little stamp on it for for my my sweet viewers. There you go. There's three oh one six. There's two seven oh five. All right, babies. Um. All right, so th so that's Ethereum. The run we are we're not in a current state of overboughtness, but overall, like on the RSI, but overall we are overbought. Um, people are are taking profit. The price structure is showing that. Um, okay, and then we wanted to look at Doge. Someone requested Doge. What's that? Um, I don't know. I think it's like Pokemon. Oh, cool. I had the. Uh ruby edition of pokemon on my game boy advanced growing up you remember the little game boy that would flip uh yeah one of those little cartridges in the game boy advance damn dude i wonder how much those sell for now i should go buy one if you if you have boxes of any like a like the original game boy let's see let's see um they're rated out of 10 so let's say a 9.5 Pokemon Red Box. How much it's it's selling for? Oh, like for the original Game Boy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Graded price 10k. No way! Yeah. Oh my Lanta. What about um? All right, no, no, that's fine. Yeah, yeah let's get Doge going. Um, okay. Dude, notorious Randy samples. I don't know what these emojis mean, but they're making me kind of uncomfortable. Don't make A B uncomfortable. That's the only rule that I have for you guys. All right. No, you, you can. can. You just have to subscribe to my OnlyFans. I have two rules: no sexual innuendos when you're talking about technical analysis, and don't make producer A B uncomfortable. But yeah, it, it, but but if you're going to sub to the OnlyFans, sub to the OnlyFans. Yeah. So so to go to. Uh, I don't even know. We might get actually get struck by YouTube for mentioning them because I know that's terms of service on Twitch. Um, for realsies. For realsies. Um, so hopefully we don't, we don't get in trouble for talking about that. Um, but whatever. I support we'll, my friends. We'll uh, go rogue. Business endeavors. His art. I support my friends' art for his art. Um. <clears throat> We're looking at uh, uh, Doge. So Doge is the same thing, my friend, um, where it had an awesome run-up. This is your your bullish engulfing candle. Classic V-shaped uh, uh, reversal with up shelf, up shelf. Y'all know that with a slanted on the left. Um, and then we ended our run right here. 
Now, the difference between Doge and Ethereum is that Ethereum is giving us a, a much easier to discern um, uh, price structure and pattern. Um, it's it's much more clearly a double top. Whereas if we look at Doge USD, it's not as obvious. It's not the one that we talk about on the show that much. This one is a descending triangle. Do you guys see it? Give me a one in chat. Laterally, appreciate it. I appreciate the emojis. Um, uh, give me a one in chat if you can see the descending triangle at the top of the run on, on Doge USD. Participation points. We'll give out discount codes to, to uh, Aaron's OF. Guru I might switch, I might switch platforms. I'm, 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 I don't like the, all the tugging and pulling OF <laughs> is doing to me. <laughs> uh, I'm due. I'm due. I'm not seeing it. Gavin knew something. <laughs> but I got a pleasure to have you have your uh your honor. <laughs> your honor. Your eminence. Uh try try Nadna. I don't I don't understand your name, but you we speak the same language. Um Heavenly Pam Stonks, private hour. PS Mike Rose sees it. Um, Abdu, 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 Abdu. I think you might be abusing chat a little bit, Abdu. You, <laughs> that could be uh, penalty box worthy. And and then rules. There you go. Um, all right, get that off the screen. Get that off the screen. Um, okay. So this is a reversal pattern. All right. Now we do the same thing that we just did with Ethereum. How low can this go? Well, it's usually the swing. What do we call this? The measured move, rather. The measured move subtracted from the line of support. So let's do that with our ruler tool real quick like. I'll just use this line, the first line on the green candle, and that gets us down. Wow. That gets us down. So this is the measure to move subtracted from support, and that gets us to right about Support, support, support. All right. So there you go. So we're looking for this pattern to resolve. We had our um, accumulation, our markup, our distribution, our markdown is what we're looking to happen next. That's what we're looking to happen here, a little markdown action. And then we're looking for another base to form for some accumulation and then a markup. It's Dogecoin. Who knows when that will happen or how big this base will be. It could. This could all happen in a series of like three days, right? Um, but there, there you go. Um, is this a market stock channel? No. We do not categorize ourselves as that. Um, we focus on um, uh, hygiene tips and um, cooking recipes microwave cooking recipes um so this this channel is dedicated to microwave cooking the wonderful world of microwave only cooking so so watch out for my upcoming uh pop-up book uh microwave survival guide recipes for the uh downtown detroit studio apartment bachelor shelly's giving us rip pltr It's still in the range, Shelly. It's in the range. It's on the so-called point of control. So we just shifted over to PLTR. We just got done looking at Doge. Um, so Shelly said rip on PLTR. Hope you got your stop losses. Remember volume profile. The biggest spike out here is where there are the where there is the most trading activity. The most trading activity is right on this line that I have marked. And this line will act like a magnet. All right. The stock is going to tend to trade around this and it's going to need some form of catalyst or just in general, what we see down here is a surge in volume to break away from it in either direction. So we're hanging on the, the point of control. Um, 
Okay, and then there was a question about necklines, I think. Neil, what is... So, Abdu, the neckline is your point of resistance or support on a chart pattern. So, if we go back to... Um, we can use Palantir right here. So, Palantir... Whoops. So, Palantir broadly has a rounding bottom i'm not going to get too technical on this and and call it a head and shoulders but it has a broad base right the neckline for this pattern is this upper line of support or i'm sorry resistance um and so when you're talking about patterns a lot of times if you're aggressive you're trading early and then shooting it toward that neckline as a target but the traditional way, like if JC Peretz were here from All Star Charts, he would say he wants to see a solid breakout above the neckline to start going long. And I think probably the best demonstration of this that we've seen in recent years is if you go back and look at Bitcoin, just a super duper long term, which is better. The bigger the base, the bigger the space. Long term rounding bottom base established with a neckline at this resistance level and the second we broke out it was hold on to your shirts and the target for that was the lowest point of the base which is like 3140 off to the neckline and then added to that neckline which got you right into when we started to get some distribution. And you can see that that serves as sort of a little control area here. So that's what necklines are. Thank you, Born to be Free. Um, okay, let's check on them because I haven't looked at them yet today. So we're not getting our after lunch volume. Should I talk to my broker? Uh, we should call him. You want to get the broker on the phone? Wait. Also, Neil. Yesterday, just quick note: if you if you're a true get techie, uh, we did hit twenty percent on uh, GameStop yesterday, and I'm watching it right now. And if we pass through the high of yesterday, that's now acting as a form of resistance. Um, I, I think we could see another big run, but we the key the key there is we need to get above that uh, high that we hit yesterday. We need to get above two twenty. Yep, that's that's your level right there. Um, <laughs> so what do you win for for taking the over on that? Um, yeah, I mean, shoot, I don't know. We can invite the we can do a tweet with a link to your OnlyFans. On the official Benzinga account. Ooh, I don't know if. Uh, okay, do your parents follow it? No. Okay. I don't, uh, I think, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I marked this level. See how this is support here for GameStop. It's also lining up with our Fibonacci levels. Um, so there you are. Um, okay, so so dog with two pay. Wants to see Hood on the daily. Yeah, we got some wild ass wicks. I mean, we have wild wicks on Hood too. So that's how I'm kind of seeing that. This one's tough. Let me switch to logarithmic on my prices. I'm going to ignore the wick on hood and just use the body of the candles. So you have a reversal and a breakout of that broader downward trend, but laterally, well, in this case, vertically, I suppose, you're hitting this level of resistance and we're a bit lower today. Um, so I, I mean, for hood, 
you just want to see that higher high. You want to see that outside candle. Boink. Um, is it worth bringing the... Let's do... Wait, no, that's the shitty one. Hold on one sec. Um, so the VWAP was a bit of support, has been support. Um, so actually crossing above it um, was a good trade signal if you were trading intraday yesterday. Um, back test the trend line. What does that mean? What do you mean by that, John? Um, what are my thoughts on option plays on airline stocks? Let's look at a specific airline. United for the hell of it. Unless you have a specific one you want me to look at. Um, I usually don't buy if, if If I'm buying options on a story, I'm buying leaps. And that's me saying like, so Airbnb is an example. I mean, I know dog with toupee was in that one too, um, where it was, uh, you know, Airbnb um, was oversold. Believe in the company. I'm, I'm aware of it because I use it in my own life. Um, whoops. So I bought uh, options that expired at least a year out. Calls. Just straight up calls. Um, but what are my thoughts on, on buying uh, options on airlines? It just goes, for me on airlines, it goes down to the technicals. Like, like so, so another thing, if you want to talk about fundamentals in the environment right now, 100% Delta variant is, let's, let's just do it. Let's just do the thing. Let's do it. Frick it. We'll do it live. Um, so look, this is the reality of the situation. So we'll look at all of we're looking at COVID statistics for all of the United States. Um, cases um, are as are just about as high as they they were at the absolute peak of cases. Um, so this is people that have actually gotten tested and tested tested and reported it. Now let's look at the unfortunate deaths. Deaths from COVID on average. This is a seven-day moving average line. This seven-day moving average is just about where we were exactly. I mean, actually, the actual levels, well, not, not the moving average, but the actual levels, which are the histograms or bars that you see, are about exactly where we were one year ago today. So the death, the, the daily deaths, uh, which are on the histograms, are exactly where we were. <laughs> Gavin Newsom donates one dollar. <laughs> thanks for thanks for the one, Gavin Newsom. Um, um, so the, so so, you know, it's uh, a little gallows humor, um, but that's the situation. So so I would be aware of the environment for airlines. Um, but just looking at technicals and something really short term, and, and we have an illustrious guest today, so we'll get to that in just one second. I'm about out of time. Um, just looking at short term, um, we got the bottom. This is a little a little bony butt bottom. Um, and the neckline for, I think it was Abdu, um, who is a name I haven't seen here. Um, the neckline, we're going to put that right about here at the meat of the trading. All right, go back and watch some old episodes of Get Technical um, uh, to see what I mean by the meat of the trading. Um, another thing to note, actually, that I'm noticing now. So, so this is a double bottom pattern. All right, that's all. That's it's double bottom. Confirm. Um, when you see two gap ups out of a reversal, um, uh, some kind of kind of be freaked a little bit. Um, it seems to be holding momentum. Um, but we are now at this level where it's going to hit some resistance um, following two gaps. Good chance that it's not the best time to enter or go long. Um, maybe wait for a pullback on that. Um, if it was if it was pro protracted over more day sessions um, and it climbed up um, without those two big old gaps, um, I would be more interested. So if you wanted to, to buy options, honestly, if I was going to buy options right now, I would look at this resistance and just expect a pullback and know that me buying directional options, either just a pure call, pure put, is a lot of ticket. Um, so the exact way that I would do it would be buy in the money. I would buy 
in the money puts because I expect a pullback at this level um, just based on resistance. Very, very short term um, in the money puts. Um, and I would set my stop loss to 25 percent loss in value of the options contract because that's that's just how I do them. Um, for those those short terms and then if i was gonna day trade it i would go down to the 10 minute and, and like you this is great i mean look at this pattern um this is extremely tradable um i would day trade it and i would use two moving averages i would use the um double ema can, does, can it, does this double ema Wait, it's just the same EMA on both? Get that out of here. Um, indicator, EMA. I'm gonna add two exponential moving averages. One, two. And the first one I'm gonna set to eight. And this is coming from your boy, uh, Brad Weber, who also has a show on Benzinga. This is his strategy, I'm stealing it because it works and it's awesome. Um, I believe it's the eight and the 10. I haven't done it for a while. Oh, shout out Trading Grounds. Shout out Trading Grounds. That's right. Um, and basically what we're doing, we're saying the eight and we're saying the eight is faster. So I'm going to make that red so I can tell. And we're just looking for entries when the eight crosses above the 10 and exits when it crosses below um, the 10. Um, and that's just scalping with options in the money expiring Friday. That That's the move is just... I believe it's eight and ten. I gotta check with Brad. Actually, can we tweet at him? That'd be great. Yeah. Um, Ask him what he thinks about UAL. No, no. I just what which moving averages does he use for day trading options? Um. Don't know off the top of my head. All right. Um, at any rate, um, that's enough out of me. We have, as always, the most illustrious guests. Abdu, hold on. We got an important question we have to answer. Um, do you think I can trade and be a pro gamer at the same time? Absolutely. Um, all right. Nothing but illustrious guests here on Get Tactical. We got Jack Clausen coming in. Jack, give me the universal sign of I'm ready. Bye. Right, give me. Okay, there we go. <laughs> How's it going? Dude? What's up? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Um, for folks that don't know who you are, would you mind giving a little introduction? Yeah, so I am I'm Jack. I'm a co-founder of the Conservative Collectors. Got a little flag behind me. Um, I'm 18. I've been uh, trading for like two two ish years now. A lot of it was in my high school classes, and then uh, COVID hit, so I was just staying home. I was online, and all I was doing was trading. Um, and then you know I decided that you know I like this. So what I'm doing now is uh, moving out to Philly with two other guys and uh, trading there. Uh, doing a little online community college um, and uh, seeing what I can do with this trading stuff. Uh, I really like it. I was able to turn a few, flip a few accounts. I think the biggest one was like 3K to 150K, something something like that. Um, but, you know, I'm more focused on helping other people. I don't really care about, you know, my gains, whatever that is. Um, but I love uh, love helping these people and, and all the people in my chat. There's some in the comments. Uh, I see them all, and, and uh, it's you know it's been it's been awesome. It's been a blessing, and I've been watching you guys ever since I first started. Just watching you and and you what you do and, and all your technical stuff. It's been it's been a big help, and it, I think it's really awesome how you're out here helping everyone for free. And I am, uh, and and it's just super cool. So uh, yeah, that's that's a little about me. Wow. Well, Jack, it's very nice to meet you and, and to have you on uh, Get Technical. Um, it's not often that we hear from uh, folks that are able to um, uh, more than double their accounts. But I mean, also folks that are so young uh, yeah. that are getting into uh, trading and investing and establishing a strategy that works for them. So that's amazing. We got Dog with Dog with Toupee here saying, man, I wish I was interested in trading back in high school. Um, yeah. Everyone in chat, let us know what you were getting up to in high school during your free time. Um, we won't censor you. You guys have a five minute window where I will not block <laughs> anything that you guys say. Let us know what you were getting up to in high school. Um, so, so that's awesome, Jack. Um, while you're here, mm -hmm. what we usually do um, is we have a guest come on and then share their screen and talk a little bit about how they look at charts, yeah, how they think yeah. about technical analysis. Mm -hmm. I got, I got a few plays. Want me to share my screen? 
Um, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let me see. If Works just like uh, it's kind of like Zoom, where it's on the bottom uh -huh. middle. Um, so we've got drugs, smoking weed. Evan <laughs> is 19. Alex Rodriguez is 19. Wow, I've been just assuming that everyone was boomers watching this on their on their 76 inch <laughs> TV uh, uh, with with the Roku. Call of Duty and Halo Three. Nice, that was me too. Um, Brenda, <laughs> Brenda, very honest. <laughs> drugs and nothing. Um, are are I born to be free? Oh, we just lost him. <laughs> He's gone, so I'll just keep going through your stuff. Blunts and stocks, same things I'm doing right now. Um, smoking weed in high school. <laughs> Pissing away in my 20s at a bar. I have a lot of catching up to do. Hey, tiny pie. Um, experimental bond configurations. Young engineer. Man, that his his youthful skin looks so healthy. I got a ch I got like halogen blue bulbs. What's going on? Do I, do I look young and healthy now? I'm back. I don't know what All happened. Right. We lost you. Was, no, it didn't happen. Um, try it, it, it happens to the best of us. I did it earlier, actually. Yeah, let me try again. Right, hold on. Here we go. Um, uh, we're still going through what people are doing in high school. Oh. Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> Someone was 69 <laughs> All oh through high God. school. All right. I think I got it. You, can you see this? Uh, yes. We got right, it cool. right here. There we go. All right. So, uh, AMC. Um, I was looking at this before, um, but basically, uh, when I first started trading, I, I used a ton of indicators and I, I'm now, you know, I don't use, uh, really any indicators. This is the 200 moving average. Um, I'm more of a fan of just breakouts, uh, I like playing ranges. Uh, AMC was one that I actually was able to catch just, you know, playing this range and, you know, ranges, accumulation, distribution phases, supply, demand, whatever you want to call it. Um, I try to keep it super simple because when I first started, I, uh, had, you know, like I said, a ton of indicators on my charts and I have nothing against indicators, but it just was messing with my head, the amount of stuff that I had. So I'm like, you know what, um, let's just take it all off. Um, and now I just trade based on volume breakouts, um, and you know, ranges momentum. I'm a huge momentum guy. There hasn't been much momentum I'm trying to catch, uh, hopefully another AMC run with this momentum here, but, um, other than that, it's just, you know, super simple stuff. What I have here on AMC is, again, like I said, my entry was here. I'm still swinging this. I think I'm up, you know, 800%, something like that. Um, and what I am what I plan to do now is I have some, some resistance here at 48.25. This is where we keep rejecting. And I play, you know, these most recent levels. Um, this rejected yesterday and rejected again today, 48.25. And then we come up here to 51. That'll be my target if we can break that. And then, um, you know, maybe maybe get something up here at 72. That's kind of a stretch. But most most likely we'll be exiting majority of my position up there at 51 if we can break 48. Quick little $3 move. Um, looking at a quick little play there. But overall, I keep it keep it very, very simple. So, um, so Jack, so so yeah. you, you set multiple levels on the way up, which is mm -hmm. exactly what I do. Um, now I'm typically scaling in and scaling out based on the, the strength of the momentum. Yeah. Are, what are, are you doing something similar to that? Or are you simply just raising your stop loss? What's your approach when you set those, like the hierarchy mm -hmm. of levels? Right, right, right. So I always try to, especially I'm, I'm not a big day trader, like, yeah, I'll day trade maybe once or twice. Um, but I, I make most of my plays off of these swings. So I have pretty loose levels. Um, a lot of my profit targets um, entered here. And, and honestly, my profit target is 51. That's a huge profit target. But what I like to do is you have your initial range, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then once I enter there, um, I'm entering with a starter position. Uh, it's selective based on your ticker. Uh, if I was entering something like an Amazon, maybe that'd be one contract and then I'd size in with two. But for here on AMC, I entered with my starter position of like five contracts um, because, you know, there's always that chance that, you know, we may break down, the momentum may not be there. And once I get a confirmation for me, that confirmation is at least a 15 minute candle hold above uh, my level. So here I added another five. And then I'm going to take some size off. Honestly, I didn't know that we were going to reject here at 48.25. Um, I thought we were going to reject and I did end up taking up some size at 46. Um, but as I go up, I like to take uh, size off and I like to bump my stop loss off. Well, once I'm up 50%, um, there's yeah. never really a reason for you to go red on your trade besides, you know, getting greedy. I'm not going to allow myself to lose money if I uh, don't need to. So 
every time I'm up at least 50%, I move it up, you know, stops to break even, I'm up 100%, move my stop loss up to 50%, and I'm trimming contracts along the way. Um, I have a few plays that I'm not in yet, and I have a few levels where I will be adding contracts, but I'm never adding my full size, and I'm always buying time. All that, all that major, major stuff that everyone teaches you and tells you to do. Yeah, and you explained it very succinctly and easily. Yeah. Um, uh, so, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, okay. So outside of AMC, which I'm already in, I was looking at low. I really like this. Um, and what I'm, what the plan is for this, uh, I actually entered a starter position again today. Super simple stuff. Some multi time frame analysis here. I got a little hourly bull flag breakout here, and I entered again starter position. Um, you know, that's two, two or three contracts. I think I'm in three contracts now up a little bit, and then I'll add a larger position. Once I break this daily, daily resistance at 208.70. clearly can't break it. And I really got no resistance until all time highs. So my full position will be added and then I'll, you know, target 215. That's a $9 move, probably, you know, 200% on that play. Um, but it's really, really simple stuff. It's, it's almost boring because there's days where, you know, my, my levels may not hit and I'm just sitting there like, I don't know what to do now. Um, so I just, you know, don't trade. It took me a while to do that, but it's it's all all simple, simple stuff. Um, yeah. And then I have have some other plays, other plays that I'm looking for in the future. This, you know, this is short term and low. I'm, I'm in this. Honestly, you could probably get in right now. I'm in some next week 210 calls. Uh, probably maybe we'll roll those into a week out after that. Um, but we'll see how that plays out. After that, though, I'm looking into uh, my favorite time to trade is uh, the winter months. You know, once we get into September, October, November, December. It's mm -hmm. when we usually get those small caps rallying. I absolutely love trading small caps. It's it's great. They don't take much volume to run. Um, and last year was able to capture a few runs. I think I caught the Fubo run, caught the Bingo run. Uh, and then DM really everything SPAC related was running. And then there was a other, obviously uh, some few others that were running. But if you look here, just based off previous history, that's where we got to run again, these winter months. This is kind of an oversold range that we're in an IWM. I don't really trade the indexes. I just use them as uh, as a potential indicator of where we're headed. Um, we could totally break down an IWM. I'm not going to uh, rule that out, but hopefully, and I do hope because I love trading these small caps, uh, that we get a nice rotation into these. And my, my biggest play, my hope is Fubo. A lot of people have been trying to catch this. And what I've been watching here, and I feel like a lot of people just have been ignoring this, is this monthly. Um, we have not been able to break this monthly high. We're honestly in a double inside month. So if we break 35, uh, I totally think we're going to see a huge move. We're in a nice little downtrend here trying to break out. Again, I think this will come next month, maybe even the month after, if we can get IWM to break out. And again, this should follow. Um, and, and hopefully produce a really, really big move. But until 35 breaks, I really have no position. Uh, we're probably going to break down. If we don't, uh, 24 is my level that we could potentially break down from. Um, and then I'm looking for 35 to break, take it up to 43. And then, you know, just based off of this double inside month, um, maybe we can see all time highs, but I keep it really simple. I'm going to take it up to 43, probably get some shares once we break 35, going to take some equity. Um, and then maybe one, two month out contracts, they are very cheap. So I don't mind taking a larger position on some farther out expirations. So do you, do you mind if we rip through a couple questions from chat? Really yeah, quick? go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so how many, uh, po like positions on, or I guess how many tickers are you looking at at any one given time? So I'm not a, uh, I'm not a big fan of or i'm not a I'm, i wouldn't say i'm not a fan of it i don't mind people that do it but i don't i don't use a scanner i use generally um if i'm looking at small caps like right now the focus is going to be going into these months like i said is small caps so i'm generally looking at you know three to five ish uh stocks per sector that i'm looking at obviously it was tech that was hot previously over the summer so i was looking at amazon tesla you know, the big five, but I don't like to have five to 10 positions open because it, it gets a little too much for me to handle. Some mm -hmm. people can do it. It's just, you know, I don't want to be looking at this chart, wondering what's going on here, what's going on there. It just messes me up so much where it, it almost becomes pointless for me to, to be in so many positions. So 
uh, like I said, I'll keeping it to five. So my my big five for um, the small caps, IWM, Fubo, Bingo is one, one of my favorites, really. Um, and all super cheap. You play equities, you play contracts, either one, really, really cheap. Bingo, and then another oh, one shit. of my favorites. Hold on, we lost you. We, um, so we got, I, we lost you. you. You were saying BNGO oh, and, then, and then you cut off. Oh, okay. Um, BNGO uh, and then NNDM, another one of my favorites. Uh, like I said, super, super cheap equities, contracts, whatever you want to play. An another reason why I love playing um, these smaller caps because they can really quadruple accounts and no matter what your size is because they're so cheap and they move really well. Again, this was the this was the crazy run that happened last winter. And I hope, you know, I hope it happens again. I don't have this charted out yet because I'm going to just wait to see what happens. I'm watching this six level. If it can hold, that's been a major level. Um, but that's another one of my favorites. Bingo, like I said, I really, really like bingo. I really like it long term as well. I think they got something good going on there. Um, I do have this charted out. Waiting for 638 to break, and then we can maybe take it up to 8. Um, and then obviously past that. But I think once these get going, obviously once these get going, these things will really start to take off. And I really, really do like like the setup. Just got to really be patient on this because it could really, really chop you around uh, in these ranges uh, if you're not patient. I'm going to start to accumulate some shares, though, until we break because I do believe this is somewhere near the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but, um, so indicators that you typically use, mm -hmm. what are they? Um, so I have on my chart is the 200 moving average. And then sometimes I like to throw on the stochastic slow. I do like the MACD, but I feel like, you know, the stochastics is a little better. It all shows the same, basically the same stuff, the same momentum. Again, I'm a huge momentum, momentum trader. So I like, I used to, you know, have this on. And then I just realized that Stocks are going to move based on volume. They're going to move based on levels. Do I need an indicator crossing for me to figure that out? Um, no. So I took it off, but you know, it was one of my favorites back when I had it. Uh, super, super accurate too. Majority of the time you get crosses up, you're going to get to see a nice push and the same to the downside. Really, really accurate. Really, really like that. Um, and then another one that I used that really helped me in the education part of my trading career was the TTM squeeze because I was struggling to find squeezes. I was liking, you know, I'm a big range trader um, and I didn't know where I could find ranges. So I use the squeeze. Every time you see some red dots, it indicates a range or a squeeze. And then you get some green dots. It will either break you out to the downside or the upside. Um, I don't really pay attention to these histogram bars. I'm just looking at the, looking at the, um, at these red dots and these green dots. So for clarity, when you say squeeze, you're talking about a volatility squeeze, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So squeeze and volatility, squeeze like this this little range here, this little squeeze, whatever it is. Um, you can see it here on the TTM squeeze as well. These red candles show that it's in a nice tight range. Mm -hmm. Once you get that breakdown, um, the this uh, red will turn green. We got that breakdown. You could have caught that to the downside, but you know, not too much. The bigger plays will come. Um, on the larger time frames and once we break to the upside but it is a very very good tool for education because you can you know it, it helps you see okay this is where we're not getting much movement once we break out either way we can see a nice move in either direction so i really really like that and then i ended up just taking off because i noticed okay well this is a range do i need the ttm squeeze to show me that that's in a range uh no so i, I ended up taking it off but those were my favorites when i did have them on uh, because again they were really really educational um, that's awesome. I like that you, that you've slimmed down to just the essentials. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I feel like a lot of people I see, um, in, in trading there, you know, they, they load their, they load their screens up with, you know, five momentum indicators, all these moving averages. Honestly, they can't even see the candles. Um, I, and I'm like, dude, you gotta just size down a little bit. Again, I don't have any, you know, problems with indicators. It's just, why do you got to make your, why do you got to make it so complicated? Trading's hard enough. And now you got to figure out, you know, what's this showing me? What's that showing me? And, you know, just you know, take a deep breath and set some levels, be patient. Your indicators are not going to make you hundred, you know, much more on your money mm -hmm. than without indicators. So take it slow um, and don't, don't overload yourself because you're going to freak out. Thinking all these, all these indicators, all this stuff. 
so I downsized. It's really helped me ever since. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, hopefully, folks in chat are taking notes. Price and volume, yeah. truth. Um, guys, any questions while we have Jack here? Um, yeah, we're getting some comments from our very esteemed, good-looking, and intelligent viewers uh, that they are very much enjoying your your uh, strategy, your style, your approach. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these people are are in my chat. Uh, they're really, really cool. Yeah, but, I'm yeah. seeing some some hashtags. I'm not familiar with. <laughs> yeah, I've never never seen that before. Jack tag. They're they're, they're, uh, they're they're developing some some new <laughs> memes. Yeah. So, um, um, so, so, do you want to rip through a couple of questions? Because now they're starting to come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Um, I see someone said. Oh, tell, tell me whichever one you want. I was going to no, say no, someone, just, some, so, someone yeah, asked yeah. about the nine EMA, and what's your take on like it? That. I do like the nine EMA um, because a lot. It is again another one of those educational things where you can see and and you know there is no indicator that'll tell you this is exactly where you'll pull back, but. The nine EMA and EMAs are really good because, and I, and I like to use them. You can use them multiple, multiple ways, but I like to use them because you are able to see where something overextended. Um, you can you also use them for momentum, but majority of the time I'm going to use it to see where, you know, where does a stock potentially need to pull back? Every time you see these candles that are far away from the nine EMA, uh, more often than not, it's going to pull back sooner rather than later. So I really like that um, to notice, okay, maybe don't go too heavy on my position. Maybe take some size off, whatever the case may be, um, just based off of that EMA. Because like I said, you're maybe going to get one or two candles that will continue pushing past the nine EMA without you know coming back down to retest. Um, but again, more often than not, it's going to come back down. It's going to retest test um, and that will provide you with a better entry but for day trades using the 9 ema is another helpful thing because you can use it as a dynamic support or resistance say you you know you want to trade something that was you know like something like a low today it was moving pretty well got a nice little morning push again overextended here on base just based off the 9 ema nothing else um, you could wait for that to come back down to retest the nine um, wait for you and you can combine it with a bull flag here get that break out of the bull flag come back down to retest and that's your you know that's your conviction on the day trade but i do like it um i just wouldn't rely on it too heavily i would combine it with something else maybe a pattern maybe an increase in volume a level break i just would not um rely solely on it for scalping you know i again those are quick moves i really wouldn't rely on something like a lagging indicator I'm more of a fan of reading tape. I'm not a big scalper. I'm more of a swinger, but nice. You can you can use it for scalping. I do like I do like the day trades though for it. Um. Okay. So we, what we get now is a combination of people shouting tickers at us and then mm -hmm. um, questions. <laughs> um. Uh. So there there was one question I wanted to to hit. So so this is I think is a really good one. So on a smaller account such as like a five k account. Um, how, how would you, and, and how would you go about managing risk with a, or, or mm -hmm. like your, your students, like, what do you, what do you teach folks? Yeah. So I teach everyone and, uh, that you obviously cannot go too heavy on anything, especially in the learning phase. Um, obviously when you become, um, a little more experienced, you can size up a little heavier, manage your risk better, know when to cut and cut fast. But when you're just learning, when you're trying to take your own plays, you always want to size down. And on a 5K account, you know, you can take a 10% position or 10% of your account position, which is $500 position, and that's okay. Um, and, and a $500 position, 100% on that, you know, you're making 500 bucks. It's great. Um, so I wouldn't, I would recommend, especially when you're learning and especially when you're trying to manage risk, um, just stick with 10% of your account. Once you start getting more comfortable, once you start understanding, you know, how stocks move, how to cut a loss, how to take profits, then maybe you can up it to 15, 20%. Now I'm at the point where I'm entering 20% of my account per play um, because I'm comfortable with cutting fast and I'm also you know, comfortable with the plays that I'm taking. So when you're first learning though, I really would recommend to stick with 10%, especially with a 5K account, a $500 position on most of these tickers is a nice at the money contract, maybe two of them. Um, so you're getting a nice play there. It's not like you're making $50. You're making, you know, 250 to $500 if you do it right. Um, so a lot, don't get too caught up in trying to make thousands. Just get, 
just focus on building that foundation. It'll pay off in, in years to come if you manage correctly. Beautifully answered. Um, so, okay. So going back, uh, John asks, can you tell us how you hit your first 10 K? That's a great question. Uh, honestly, when I first started, um, I hit, I was, you know, I was struggling, uh, these, this guy, Jay, the trader and, and Troy, they are business partners really, really helped me. Wait, are but... you from Michigan? No, 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 I'm not. I'm from New York. Oh, okay. Did you say Troy? Yeah. yeah the Troy's from, he's from Arizona. Well, I don't oh, know where okay, he was okay. born, but yeah, yeah, yeah. love that guy. Um, <laughs> But he, so when I first started, honestly, I was, I, I had, you know, I was, I didn't, I don't want to get in my life story. I didn't have much to throw at accounts. Like I was having, mm. you know, $500, $500 one K account. So when I hit, I hit, you know, I think I hit three or four K on my account and it was just throwing money at stuff. Um, and I was like, Oh my God, I'm waking up and, and I'm, I'm making this money. I had no idea how. So I hit my first, it wasn't 10 K, but I hit my first three to four K just luck. It was just luck. Um, but my first 10 K seriously, serious trading, um, it took me a while to figure it out, um, uh, because I was trying to get rich quick overnight. I feel like a lot of people were, but I sat back and I realized, okay, I'm going to downsize. I played some spreads. I took one K to, you know, I think it was 10 to 15. That was my first serious account flip. Um, and I just sized down on positions. I took, um, you know, some spreads to build some cushion. I like playing credit spreads. I like playing debit spreads. They're great for small accounts. Um, but once I once I see that the play is working in my favor, once I see that the play is is turning out to be um, something that I really like, then um, I will size in a little heavier. And that's that's really how you have to grow your one k accounts, your two k accounts. You've got to take a little bigger position um, because it's tough to grow an account with, you know, hundred dollar positions each time. So I, you know, wasn't afraid to start pulling the trigger and that helped me grow that account to 10 K. Um, and now I'm able to do a little bigger things because I have some more money, but just don't be afraid to pull the trigger once you understand the, the market. Um, okay. So that was another fantastic answer. So thank you, Jack. Um, you. man, you've been a, a great guest. I've really enjoyed watching how you look at charts and just seeing you cut through a lot of noise and, and, look at things simply Thank you. um so yeah awesome to have you here jack um we are at time um and be, and since we are where Thank can you, folks, yeah. where can folks What's find where can folks find more from you and uh what you're doing uh so i think i think they linked it in the description my instagram is in the description my group is in the description uh, i have a ton of free stuff on my instagram breakdowns education uh, always feel free to dm me um, and reach out if you have any, have any more questions. Um, but I totally really love being on here. Love, would love to come back. Um, this is, it's, it's, it's surreal to feel that I am, was watching this when I first started and now hope and now able to be on this, to talk to you. Uh, it's been, it's been a great experience. So totally thank you so much for, for having me on it means the world to me. Um, and I hope, like I said, to be on here again, if you, if you want me to. Yeah, I would love it, Jack. And, and, you know, congratulations on all of your success. Thank you. Um, and it's, you know, it's honestly, I, I was very, very impressed and I can't wait. I'd hopefully we do get a, a chance to talk again. So, yeah. um, everyone go check out the room, check out the Instagram producer, a B put down your vape and put in the, the information <laughs> in the, in the chat so everyone can get to it. Um, Jack have a good rest of your day and a good rest right. of your week. my friend. Thank you. You too. Thanks. What's up? Do you drop that the, the links in there? Yeah, they're in the description. I'm dropping them again in the chat right now. So it's uh, you know, I just want to make it as easy as possible on our very good looking, intelligent, uh, diligent viewers. So, so who amongst our viewers is having an existential crisis because they weren't um, scaling in and scaling out of of uh, uh, intelligent uh, options trades on great tickers when they were 18 years old? What were you guys doing? We know what you guys were doing. It's basically all the same thing. It was just drugs and, <laughs> and pr promiscuity. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, Neil. No, I'm not going to knock it. I'm not going to knock it. How many likes did we get to? If we got to 150 likes, we get Spice Girls. If we did not, we don't get Spice Girls. That's how it works. We are at 105 right now. We do have Mooner Bus getting ready to start up here in a few minutes. Um, so if we're going to get the, that like goal, we got to do it ASAP. Like I'm talking in the next 30 seconds. 
All right, you guys have 30 seconds to get the Spice Girls out of the server room at Benzinga, and then we give them a little snack, and then we put them back into the server room. Um, and that's just how it is. Look. Yep, 20 seconds. You have 20 seconds, or something happens to AB. Oh, jeez. All right, are you watching the likes? Because I'm not watching it. I got the code. Yeah, we're at like 125 right now, 130. Probably not going to make it. Nope. No, nope. it doesn't look like we get Spice Girls get today. Get off the couch, losers. To tune in tomorrow to see if we get Spice Girls. Yeah, maybe. Well, maybe maybe we give them ten more seconds. Uh, okay. Yeah, I I know that those those Moon or Bus guys are scary, Aaron. I know. They're, they're, literally, they're, yeah, the Moon or Bus guys are in the studio right now, waiting for me to get out of my seat. All right, you guys have ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, eight seven. Uh no, we're still at 146. Oh, see, Neil, see this? Ooh, someone uh, and someone disliked it. Look at that. So you guys all want? You know what? I just give it. We just give the people what they want. You want to? You want a pickle from the jar? I'll give you a pickle from the jar. All right. I'm not gonna be stingy about the pickles. Just give me the fucking pickle. All right. Big shout out to Jack for coming on the show. That kid was sick. Can't wait to see him again. Thank you all for tuning in for another redonkulous episode of Get Technical. Um, Aaron Bree is definitely getting yelled at by all the 14-year-olds that do uh, Moon or Bus. Hit that like. Subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow. And until then, happy trading. Bam. Stick around for Moon or Bus big episode. We're discussing uh, proof of beauty, you said? Proof of beauty. Beautiful. All right, coming up, Ryan's taking my spot. Let's go. Don't go anywhere. This stream will automatically redirect you to Moon or Bust. Happy trading.